paying attention to basic needs like the need for control, attachment, and self-worth, and providing a safe and pleasant setting. That may sound a, a sort of a wellness program, but it, I think it's very important that people have a really good experience. This gives them hope and um, reassurance to then eventually face the more problematic, um, the problematic sides of their illnesses. Uh, w uh, eventually, in all patients, uh, some difficult issues arise, and then the role of the therapist is to provide a maximum of, of reassurance and support in phrases of confrontation with the trauma. Um, some words to music. I like to quote uh, Altenmüller. He's a music researcher in Germany. Music is the strongest non-pharmacological stimulus for neuron restructuring, powerfully affecting the limbic system, leading to the release of endorphins and other hormones in a way exceeded only by sex. Um, so music is really a powerful tool if you um, use it in a therapeutic manner. You must keep in mind that music transports specific messages by melody, rhythm, and lyrics, and thus influences feelings and mood. It provides a handrail function when people get disrupted, they can orient on the music. We, uh, we don't use head, we didn't use headphones, we listened to the music too, so um, it, it, um, it helps us to, to hear how the music arrives with the patients when we hear it too. It's a, it's a funny thing that uh, music we know when we play it and it's not appropriate, it doesn't sound right. It sounds sort of and it gives us a clue on where the patient is or if he's uh, actually listening to the music and if it is appropriate. We adapted the music to the phase of the experience and um, we made the experience that pieces of music have to be at least four minutes. That's, that's the time it needs for a piece of music to um, sort of flower and take the, the patient along and, and guide him to, a, to another place. Uh, we preferred slow and flowing music and we, uh, I made each evening after the session, a take-home CD of music, of the music played during the day so they could listen to it and sort of tune in again in the weeks after the session. It was great, really appreciated by the, um, by the patients. Um, now, preliminary results, we had 14 subjects enrolled and 12 completed treatment. Uh, you know, uh, Switzerland is quite a safe place and in terms of PTSD, boring. We have a very low prevalence, under 1% actually. And most types of trauma result from accidents or sexual abuse um, or medical treatment. It's uh, quite a, a unknown that medical treatment can be very painful and, and frightening and people get traumatized during operations, um, waking up, for example, or painful experiences, or being extubated after, after surgery, and choking, and things like that. We had two dropouts. Um, the one was, one was a man from Turkey who had a severe work accident. And after one and a half hours, he sat up and said, I don't want this, stop it. So we were uh, flabbergasted. We didn't know what to do. And he wanted to go smoke on the, on the balcony. We let him. And afterwards, we went on a long walk with him for three, for three hours outside of the office to get him down. And during that time, he talked a lot about his family and what happened to him and about his distress. But he um, decided to quit the study. He dropped out. And surprisingly, um, 
from the time that he, he decided to, to stop it, he, the cultural thing came in. He would ignore my wife completely. Uh, Turkey is a very patriarchal society, and he would orient only to me as a man. He wouldn't talk to with her. He didn't talk to with, her, uh, with uh, Verena anymore. I think the, 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 uh, I think the the cultural reason is probably the one why he dropped out. When we couldn't handle the situation together. The other one was also a woman from South Africa who experienced apartheid, and uh, she she had a full-blown MDMA experience on placebo. <laughs> And it was too much for her because uh, it didn't provide support for her, enough MDMA support, so she, she also decided to quit. Okay, um, I'll try to fasten up. Six subjects have completed the one-year follow-up, and we saw that uh, um, they had a, a mean reduction of 35 points. Uh, the two additional stage three sessions for three subjects did not uh, lead to additional improvement of CAP scores. And we have the impression that active placebo does something to some patients. It seems to activate traumatic memories in some subjects without providing the full support. The double blind works with ac uh, uh, better with active placebo in one case both therapists and uh, patients were completely fooled um, in two act at the end of until the end of the trial treatment. In the two active placebo subjects, we were uncertain, and in one full dose subject, therapists were uncertain, and the patient was completely fooled. Now here are the results. Um, we had a mean reduction of only 14 points. This was quite a bit disappointing for us because we worked hard with them. Um, there's a great stray of, of a, a significant, uh, a statistical, uh, how do you say, variance of, uh, of the results over here. And you can see that um, CAP scores go down uh, in placebo group here and in the full dose group after the uh, um, second session. But with the placebo, CAP scores go up till after the third session. We didn't reach significant values. Uh, the P was uh, uh, under 0.1. Um, the PDS showed significant uh, uh, values in the p-values of uh, lower than uh, 0 0.05. And uh, I'd like to give you uh, just a short case vignette. To f uh, this is uh, one of the non-response um, patients. It's a 33-year-old man. He's a, he was on disability assurance since the age of 18. Uh, he had a, um, a, a difficult childhood, and his main trauma was a motorcycle accident at the age of 18 years with whiplash injury, a complex fracture of, the, of his left leg and knee. And he stayed in, in and out of hospitals for nearly three years, and after experiencing a near-death experience after one operation, he was later on uh, traumatized again. I'll skip that. Um, the results, he, he didn't improve in CAPS. Um, after 12 months, uh, the referring therapist quote, um, told us uh, he, he was more open, responsive, changed for the better, and EMDR worked better. Quote from the patient, MDMA is the first psychotherapy that I feel works. I notice things changing in my body and how I'm less tense. I know I am tough and resistant, but with MDMA, I was able to let my injured leg be touched for the first time without fear and tension. I have hope again. Then, after this period, we got permission 
to uh, give him two additional sessions. This is the subject who wrote to the health authorities. He found a girlfriend for the first time. Now, how do you capture such, such, a, such an improvement? And they, and they uh, engaged in a touch training. She, he learned to get touched uh, the first time in his life and to be caressed and um, uh, receive a massage. And after the two uh, additional sessions, we assessed him as less self-centered and empath more empathetic. His feelings of alienation had gone down. He slept better and, and uh, said his injured leg belongs to him again. These are his CAP scores and the PDS scores. You can see here the initial CAPs, a baseline. This is the three-week post-MDMA-3. And this is after 12 months. I'll skip this one. So, um, conclusions. Uh, MDMA-assisted psychotherapy can be safely administered without drug-related serious events in a population of patients with treatment-resistant PTSD. Uh, there are, is a trend to improvement in PTSD symptoms as measured by CAPS, and three MDMA sessions lead to better results than only two. Uh, but two additional MDMA sessions in stage three did not further improve results as measured by the CAPS. Active placebo ensures a better double blind than pure placebo, and active placebo seems to evoke a slight MDMA effect in some subjects without providing full MDMA uh, support. So here are the challenges we have now have. Uh, it's still the question of what is the best way to ensure a double blind. And uh, in the light of our numerous non-response subject, how can we best capture and document improvements and with which rating instruments? We have to think about that. Uh, we also have to think about non-response to treatment. Who and why is somebody not responding to such a powerful therapy? And uh, there seems to be a long-term improvement after uh, MDMA-assisted therapy. Um, we have to look at the patients, what they're doing after a year or two. And the development of a manual, manual is a crucial um, issue. And of course, training future therapists to do much more of this work. Thank you.